Let's face it, we've all got insecurities about our bodies. But for some people, the ways they try and fix them only make things worse. Much worse. Now, let's not be quick to judge anyone, but hopefully, there's a lesson or two we can learn from their mistakes. So belt up, rookie. We've got everything from boulder biceps to exploding butt cheeks to get through. <sighs> I'm already out of breath, and this is only the warm-up. All right, let's find out what happens when fake muscles go wrong. Synthvestal Stallone When it comes to the perfect male physique, everyone has their own ideals. Whether that's Tyler Durden, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or like this Brazilian man, your favorite 80s action hero. But he's less Rambo and more Ramb- oh no. See, despite most of this guy's body looking average and healthy, his biceps are horribly inflamed and infected. We don't know for sure what happened as there's very little information out there about him but he was almost definitely using something called synthol, and lots of it. Synthol is a grotesque mixture of oil, painkillers, and alcohol that bodybuilders sometimes inject into their muscles to make them look extra swole before competitions. But some people like our Brazilian friend here have all the gear and no idea. He's used it as a kind of cheat code to look super jacked without shifting any iron at all. Unsurprisingly, pumping your arms with a load of slimy cocktail really isn't good for you. There's the obvious muscle deformities which don't exactly scream peak aesthetic to me, but there's also increased risk of nerve damage, infections, and much worse. Sheesh. Well, I hope his big arms make him happy. At least he's modeled himself after Sylvester Stallone because his future might get a little rocky. Candace get any worse? Hold the phone. If synthol is so dangerous, why bother? Well, because it has potentially fewer side effects than the alternative, anabolic steroids. These are medicines often misused by bodybuilders to enhance their muscle growth. Unlike synthol, they do actually stimulate real growth, but their side effects can be severe, something Candace Armstrong from London, UK knows all too well. Candace suffered with terrible body dysmorphia, a mental condition where you get hung up on perceived bodily flaws that realistically no one else would notice. So she began working out to improve her self-image. After two years of daily three-hour workouts, however, she still wasn't happy. She wanted better, faster progress. One of her fellow gym goers recommended Trenbolone. Trenbolone is an anabolic steroid that works by mimicking natural hormones like testosterone and human growth hormone, or HGH. It boosts muscle growth by increasing how much protein your body can absorb and generates large amounts of muscle tissue. Sure enough, the more Candace took, the bigger she grew and the less insecure she felt. Great, right? But her body responded to this spike in hormones in a truly shocking way. Only a few weeks after starting her new regime, Candace began growing facial and body hair, and her voice became deeper. What? Yep. Because Trenbolone mimics testosterone, the male sex hormone, it can very literally make women more masculine. For Candace, these changes started off gradual. However, after two years of Trenbolone use, Candace was almost unrecognizable from her past self. She's even taken to wearing men's clothes to escape the abuse she was getting on the street. Dang, that's horrible. Last I found, Candace was seeking professional help to manage her image issues. I sure hope she's feeling better now. She's been through a lot. Kiro Me Softly The world of fitness influencers has become super competitive in recent years, but Russian Army veteran Kirill Tereshin has taken extreme measures to keep an arm in the race. And I don't think you've seen an arm quite like this. Kirill, also known as Russian Popeye, started injecting synthol into his arms at the age of 20. After four years of pursuing his ideal male physique, which is apparently the Discord logo, he had to undergo emergency surgery to remove excess fluid and dead muscle from his triceps. Ugh, I'm gonna barf. Despite this, there's still a huge lump of petroleum jelly in his bicep, which he refused to have removed. In fact, he's only gone further with his surge of body modifications. Kirill briefly switched his attention to his legs, getting silicone implants in his calves. Hmm, I used to have one of those in my school pencil case, and that's not all. It gets even more extreme. 
As a lifelong fan of extraterrestrials, Kirill's current plan is to turn himself into one. So he shaped his jaw, forehead, cheeks, and lips to appear as otherworldly as possible. Well, we can all agree he's achieved that. There's definitely an outer space, outer face joke here somewhere, but uh, I just can't bring myself to make it. A couple of things that really shouldn't be alien to you, though, are those like and subscribe buttons. So go ahead and make first contact with them. Unless you don't want a constant flow of amazing content, of course. All right, then. Let's get back to the video. Absolutely awful. Can we agree the 2000s were a weird and unsettling time? From beer apps and frosted tips to all of these Shrek-themed foods, it really was a dumpster fire. But one of the most disturbing things was the invasive and bullying paparazzi culture. So when one of its pioneers, Darren Lyons, was caught on the other side of the camera, people were quick to give him a taste of his own medicine. When appearing on the British reality TV show Celebrity Big Brother in 2011, one part of Darren's body seemed to be disproportionately toned compared to the rest. And he certainly wasn't keeping those architectural abdominals under wraps either. But then if I'd coughed up almost $15,000 on them, I'd be showing off the goods too. See, Darren wasn't grinding out crunches and sit-ups every morning. He'd flown to Poland for a muscle sculpting operation that removed most of the fat between the layers of muscle. The issue was, by only focusing on his stomach, he had the perfectly reasonable body of a 46-year-old man, but the abs of a 23-year-old pro athlete. Now, bullying is wrong, but this guy made a killing from harassing and selling invasive photos of various celebrities. All I'm saying is, karma's got a funny way of coming back around, eh, Darren? Paul the Other One Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of YouTuber turned pro boxer Jake Paul. His recent rampage of beating on retired MMA fighters old enough to be his dad hasn't been without its fair share of controversies. But there's one photo from his first amateur fight against fellow YouTuber Deji which really caught fans' attention. The self-proclaimed problem child seemed to have one minor problemo of his own. It's not entirely clear where his shoulder stops and the backdrop begins. Yeah, I'd also be pretty mad if my right trap was fading into the ether. So what's the deal? Has Jake become one with the supernatural? I know shadow boxing is a big part of his training, but I've never seen a right hook thrown from another dimension. In reality, it's just some dodgy editing. Probably some keen to impress intern on Jake's team tried bulking him up a little on Photoshop to look more intimidating. And compared to this more recent photo, they either didn't get the job or brushed up on their editing skills. Whether you love him or hate him, I gotta give him credit. After all these years, he's still got that same deranged twinkle in his eyes. In fitness and in health. You know the saying, couples who train together remain together? Well, that couldn't be truer for George and Susan Koprash. These lovebirds are Canadian bodybuilders who've competed in the sport for a whopping 30 years. Whoa. I go to the gym once and need to take a week off, and I only use the vending machine. But it's not always been sunshine and rainbows for this literal power couple. In 2014, they caught a whole lot of flack online when they showed off some pretty unconvincing silicone implants on stage at a competition. Oof. George cleared the whole controversy up by later stating they'd sought out a professional who claimed to have performed the implant procedures on hundreds of bodybuilders before. Hmm. Unsurprisingly, he also stated he was very unhappy with the results, as was his wife. Still, they decided to attend the competition anyway because their daughter was competing and it'd be the first time all three of them had competed as a family. However, this is the internet and people love to hone in on someone's flaws without knowing the full story. As such, these photos were broadcast across every fitness meme page worth shaking a dumbbell at. The 30-year veterans of the game ended up cutting a lot of hate for it. Sheesh. I bet those keyboard warriors would never say anything to this bodybuilding family in person. They'd be Susan for a bruising. <laughs> Get it? Two-day six-pack. I don't have any tattoos. I've always been too indecisive. But one crafty client in Manchester, England was anything but indecisive when he opted for one that ensures him a beach-ready body 365 days a year. This video posted on tattoo artist Dean Gunther's TikTok shows his client struggling with motivation in the gym, so he tried getting the body of his dreams a different way. After two long, painful days under the needle, are you ready to see his incredible body transformation? Mmm, 
who's this fine chiseled thing? The detail in the tattoo is actually pretty good, but then maybe I'm just comparing it to these attempts by other people? In fact, yes, I definitely am. I mean, it doesn't look like the colors even match his skin. However, fresh tattoos always take time to settle, so maybe, just maybe, it'll turn out fine. And Dean didn't charge him a penny for it. Actually, it's given me an idea for how to get more people to click on my videos. Ta-da! Hmm, yeah, maybe not. I'm glad I drew this on before fully committing. Now, how do I get rid of Sharpie stains? Gruesome Truth whether you like bodybuilding or not, there's no denying that many bodybuilders push themselves to their very limits to achieve their goals. Some, however, like Belgian-born Edward Gurr, push themselves way too far. Gurr lived a chameleonic life, starting off as an athlete before switching to bodybuilding, modeling, and even working as a Hollywood stuntman, which is the coolest job, like, ever. But for a whopping 15 years, he was taking steroids to pack on the muscle mass. The problem is, as well as making you into a hulking muscle machine, steroids can also increase your blood pressure. So if you overuse them, it can put a huge strain on your heart. Sure enough, in June 1997, whilst cooking dinner in his kitchen, Gurr had a heart attack, to the point his heart literally stopped beating. Jeez. Now any logical person would say that's game over, but not this Hollywood hero. Amazingly, he lived. After countless surgeries and procedures to repair the damage, Gurr kept on kicking on. How incredible is that? Despite his heroic recovery, though, Edward sadly passed on in 2015 from other complications. What a bummer. But it doesn't detract from his resilience, both in his sport and his recovery. This one's to you, Edward. Photoshop Flops all right, so if you can cast your mind as far back as a couple of minutes, you'll remember Jake Paul's awkward Photoshop faux pas. But as I'm sure you're aware, it's not just celebrities that edit their images on the internet. And some people's attempts are far worse than others. Take this kid. He's ripped, all right. Ripped those muscly arms straight out of a magazine to pose with. Man, I hope his mom walked in on that scene playing out. Then we have this cool dude. If you're wondering what's up with that odd-looking bod, take a closer look at the bottom left. Yep, he bought a t-shirt with a muscly body print on it, took a pic, then edited out the white parts of the top. Incredible. But in first place for sheer audacity, I'm giving the medal to this guy. That arm is twice the size of his head. So even if anyone did believe this pic's unedited, they'd have some serious questions about what he's been up to with that left arm. <coughs> In all seriousness, it's sad that anyone would feel the need to do this, but come on. The more worrying thing is it's often far more subtle. The point is, don't believe everything you see on Instagram. Thriller filler. Women's bodies come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are heavier on top, some are heavier on bottom. Well, patients of O'Neill Morris are definitely heavier on the bottom, much heavier. O'Neill ran a back alley beautician in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. While she told her patients her products were the creme de la creme, she was really injecting a cement concoction into their derrieres. I'm sorry, she did what now? <laughs> oh, you heard me correctly. O'Neill's mix contains cement, silicone, and fix-a-flat, which is for sealing flat tires, not sealing an entire breeze block's worth of cement inside a woman's badonka donk. Hmm, I've watched enough medical dramas to know this Home Depot shopping list doesn't sound like standard practice. And it wasn't. She didn't have a license, the whole operation was illegal, and all in all, over 30 people have come forward claiming they paid for dodgy cosmetic procedures. Sadly, many of these women were in desperate situations, unable to afford reputed cosmetic surgeons and trusting in O'Neill's cheaper service. All of them suffered from disfigurement, illness, and even hospitalization due to the bogus treatments. So in 2017, this toxic tush doctor was sentenced to 10 years in prison. I'd say she got off lightly, but let me know your thoughts on this crazy story in the comments. Natty O'Neill. Next up, we've got a guy that shares more than just a name with O'Neill Morris. As far as I know, Canadian bodybuilder Kenny O'Neill isn't putting anything weird in or around his butt though. No, he prefers to keep things above the belt. Sheesh, I've heard of bowling ball shoulders before, but this dude's got bowling pins. Now, Kenny's never been quite clear about what was going on with his muscles in these photos from the 2016 Vancouver Bodybuilding Championship, 
To me, it could be a less severe version of what our Rambo friend was doing earlier. However, Kenny was insistent he'd never even seen Synthal before, nor had implants. But his fans were quick to share photos from a few months before the competition where his shoulders look unnaturally swollen. So what was his explanation? Well, he blamed the lighting. Kenny, my guy, unless the lights were inside your actual shoulders, we all know that's not true. Later, Kenny fessed up that he'd had infections in both deltoid muscles from overusing water-based testosterone in his shoulders. Apparently, his doctor drained the excess fluid and gave him antibiotics, but it didn't fix the problem before the competition. Now, I'm not sure what I believe. Only Kenny knows the real truth. I just hope he got those meaty mounds fixed before they popped. Blech. Run Down Ronnie As we've already seen, Synthol is not something to be messed with. And while some people who dabble in it are lucky enough not to suffer a great deal of harm, others aren't so fortunate. Ronnie Rono was a Kenyan bodybuilder who sadly lost his life as a direct result of Synthol use. Man, that's tragic. In early 2017, he noticed a small swelling in his right arm, which by April had spread to his left hand. After an MRI scan at the local hospital, the severity of Ronnie's problems were exposed. The synthol had reacted badly with his muscles, disfiguring them and causing some of them to lose all function. His chest muscles had become so grossly enlarged there was no coming back. It wasn't long before he was bedbound and unable to carry his own weight without fatiguing. And to make matters worse, because he was no longer able to work and fend for his family, his wife left him along with their five-year-old child. Damn, poor guy. In 2020, Ronnie passed away at the age of just 30. But the real kicker? He could never admit to using Synthol. Instead, he claimed he was a heavy drinker during his bodybuilding days and that someone must have injected him without him knowing. Hmm, whether that's true or just a story Ronnie told himself to feel better, I guess we'll never know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Mean Green Photoshop Machine Ever wondered how to get that hulking superhero physique without having to eat chicken and rice 14 times a day? Well, take a few tips from Sajan Garibi. You may be familiar with this mammoth guy. I've actually covered him before. He's known as the Iranian Hulk and has racked up over a million Instagram followers in awe of his impossible size. Rumored to weigh around 400 pounds, and by the looks of it, standing about 13 feet tall, Sajad looked like a behemoth of a man. So when a fight was booked between him and 6'6 six six British giant Martin Ford, fans were pretty hyped to see which of these Herculean heavyweights would come out on top. However, things didn't exactly go as expected. It turns out Goribi had been tweaking his proportions on Photoshop to look much bigger than he was. He was actually 6'2 and weighed about 300 pounds. Now don't get me wrong, he's a big boy, but the fans wanted Sajat smash, and all he really smashed was his reputation. As the fight drew closer, it became pretty obvious that Goribi's biggest fight wasn't in the ring, but with himself. After a press conference to build hype, he was seen crying inconsolably. Unwilling to beat a guy who's already beating himself, Ford pulled out over concerns around Garibi's health, and Garibi deleted all the edited images he'd put out on Instagram. Ouch. That's a rough way to get out it. Nowadays, he keeps posts to a minimum and seems to just be focused on training. I sure hope he pounces back and we can see him in the ring soon. Ill-starred Sagato Oh boy, if you don't have them already, you'd better get your tissues out. I got all teary-eyed just reading up on Brazilian bodybuilder Valdir Sagato. You might have seen him before. He gained internet notoriety for his heavily artificial synthol physique. But in Valdir's case, a picture doesn't always tell a thousand words. He'd grown up around Sao Paulo in the 1970s and 80s and had a tough adolescence, slipping into bad habits and an unhealthy lifestyle that left him worryingly underweight. In an attempt to turn his life around, Valdir joined a gym, hoping the structure and exercise would pull him out of this rut. And it did, for a time. But then in 2013, someone at his gym introduced him to Synthol, and Valdir was immediately hooked on the way it made him look. He began pumping his chest, shoulders, and arms full of this stuff, to the point his biceps swelled to a gargantuan 23 inches. That's almost as big as a soccer ball. By 2016, his doctors warned him that the risk of nerve damage or worse was alarmingly high. But none of that mattered to Valdir. He enjoyed the attention it brought him too much. He even changed his Instagram name to Valdir Senthal. 
It turns out, however, the doctors were right. Sadly, back in August 2022, Valdir's vices got the better of him. It was only his 55th birthday. Even worse, although he'd amassed over a million followers on TikTok, it was in no way a reflection of how the dude lived. In reality, he was almost completely alone. My gosh, told you it was a heavy one. I just hope Valdir's found some peace now. Loose Caboose Social media bombards us with images of unattainable beauty standards that can have a massively negative impact on how we see ourselves. For 23-year-old Mia Mafia from Leeds, England, that was especially true. She'd become absolutely enamored with the Kim Kardashian figure. You know, tiny waist, big bottom. But at a petite size 8, this seemed totally impossible for Mia to attain. That is, until she discovered a clinic in Belgium that could do bum augmentation surgery silicone implants for your booty. So after saving around $8,000, she traveled over to get the body of her dreams. But things didn't exactly turn out how she wanted. The doctor told her that she couldn't have implants any larger than two inches, much smaller than Mia had planned. However much she begged though, the clinic refused. So Mia cut her losses, accepted the doctor's proposal, and had the procedure. Happy-ish ending, right? Ha! <laughs> Wrong. After the work was done, Mia couldn't sit down or put any weight on the operated area whilst it healed. So she faced a grueling journey home and at points had to lie face down on the train platforms just to rest. Then, 10 days after she got back to Leeds, she awoke to a grisly shock. Her mattress was soaking wet. One of her new implants had burst and leaked all over the bed. Jeez, that's grim. She immediately rushed to the hospital, but begged the surgeons not to take the implants out, despite the high risk of infection. Now, I know that might seem crazy, but if I were in Mia's shoes, I'd probably put up a fight too. Think about it. If you had a crippling insecurity that you'd paid a lot of money to have corrected, then someone threatened to take that away, how would you feel? Luckily for Mia, she got her blown up backside fixed, had new implants fitted, and is now much happier. Phew. So there really is a happy ending to this particular tale. Disaster averted. <sighs> After all that, I'm gonna go eat a pizza. Turns out my perfect body is one filled with 12 inches of cheesy goodness. So which of those muscular malfunctions shocked you the most? Let me know down in the comments, and thanks for watching.